Okay, so I need to show you how to start flatting comic pages so you can save all that lovely money. I'm going to show you in Photoshop, but as I said before, you know, the process in Clip Studio is pretty much identical. If you want me to show you how to flat a page in Clip Studio, let me know in the comments and I'll do another video for you guys. But again, it's pretty standard. But when you open Photoshop for the first time, it can look very, very intimidating. So please do not worry. There are, we're going to be using very, very few tools for this demonstration. But what we need to do is when we first open Photoshop, we need to set up our tools correctly. So the main tools that you're going to be using to flat are the lasso tool, which is up here. And we're also going to be using the paint bucket, which is the fill tool. But before we actually start flatting, we need to set these tools up correctly. So if you go to your lasso tool for a start, we'll work from you know top to bottom. You need to make sure that this little button up here, anti-alias, is not checked. I repeat, not checked. So at the moment, there is a check mark in it. Just click on it. So that is off. And when you go down to the paint bucket, again, you need to make sure that the anti-alias button is checked off as well. So the reason we are turning the anti-alias or anti-alias or however you want to practice it off is because what it tends to do, say I've just selected my lasso tool and what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna draw just a random shape and then I'm gonna go over to my paint bucket and then I'm just gonna pick a random color. I'm gonna pick red and I'm just gonna click inside that selection that I've just done. So with anti-alias off, if I zoom into this image, you can see that the actual lines of this selection are solid. There, there's no bleed into the white. What happens is if you turn anti-alias on and on in the paint bucket, and then I go back to my selection tool again, and I draw another shape next to this, I'm gonna get it pretty close so you can see it. Then if I fill that with the paint bucket again, and then if I zoom in, you will see, if I zoom in a little bit closer, that that actually is not a solid line. It goes from red to pink, to a lighter pink, to a grayish white, then to the white, okay? So the reason why we don't want that is because when an artist, so when a colorist actually wants to select a block of color in the flats, if the anti-alias is on, it will not select these other areas and it's gonna look really, really horrible. So this is what I mean when I say that when you flat a page, you need to do it properly. So you need to make sure that the anti-alias in the lasso is off and in the paint bucket because we want solid colors, not faded colors, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. So just again, I'm gonna say it once more, go to your lasso tool, make sure the anti-alias is unchecked and in your paint bucket as well, because we do not want these blurry lines when we're doing flats. We want nice, strong, vivid blocks of color. Okay, so let's flat a page together. This is a page from my comic Big F of Worms that I do with my buddy J. Francis Totti. And just like the cage page, this is how I get the pages from them. I'm gonna put a link to this page in the description so you guys can, you know, have a play, have a flat along and, you know, practice, you know, get those flattened skills perfectly so you can save all that lovely money. So we've set up our tools, but we need to set up the page for flatten as well. And again, as I said, you know, Photoshop can be intimidating when you first open it, but it's really not, so please don't worry. The only thing you need to remember is we're gonna be using what's called layers. And layers are exactly what they sound like. You know, we have different layers above and below. So for example, the artwork here is on layer zero. So when you open your artwork, it may have a little padlock here saying that layer's locked. If it is, just give the layer a double click and that will turn that off for yourself. So that is the artwork. So what the first thing I always do when I flat a page is I double click on the layer zero where it says, and I change the name of this. So I'm gonna call this inks because that is my inks layer. As I said, because we're working in layers, if I try and color this page from the image there, I'm actually coloring on top of the actual artwork, which we don't want to do because it's covering up all the pretty pages. So if you make a mistake, just you know go to edit, and then step back and that'll undo what you've done. Or you can press Alt, Control and Z on your keyboard and that will undo the last action, okay? So what we need to do is we need to add a flat underneath the artwork so it doesn't destroy the artwork. So what we need to do is if we go down to the bottom right hand corner, you'll see this square with the folded edge. That is for a new layer. So click that and you get layer number one come up, but that's popped up above the ink. So again, if I try and draw on that, this time it's not distracting the artwork below it because it's on its own separate layer. But again, we cannot see the artwork because I'm painting on top of it. So what we need to do is just click and hold that layer and then drag it under the inks layer. The only problem with that is we can't see what we've actually done there because the inks 
are above those colors. So what we need to do is that inks layer, we need to make it transparent. So what we do is click on the inks layer, make sure it's highlighted. And then just above it, you can see this little drop down menu that says normal. Now, if we click multiply, what that does is anything on that layer that's actually white now becomes transparent. So anything we do underneath it actually shows through and it doesn't destroy the artwork above. So this is where we're gonna do our flats and this is where our colorist works as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete that. So what I'm gonna do is just do another layer. Again, it's layer one. I'm gonna click and drag that underneath the links make sure it's underneath it. And then I'm gonna double click where it says layer one and I'm gonna change this name to flats so this is where we're going to work so we don't destroy any of the lovely artwork above it so what i want to do is i'm going to zoom in and to zoom in you can use a little magnifying glass here and i just move my pen across the tablet from left to right that goes zooms in and out or the other way to do it is if you press the z button on your keyboard and press it and hold it down and then move your pen from left to right across the, the page it zooms in and out as well so the first thing we need to do is we need to fill this entire layer with a single color because when we're doing flats, we need to work with blocks of color and we don't want any white gaps. So what we do is we're gonna pick a nice random blue color, make it a nice light one. And then I'm gonna get my paint bucket. Again, making sure the anti-alias is off and I'm on the flats layer. And then I'm just going to click anywhere on that page and it fills the entire page with that blue color. Now, how you do flats is you wanna work from big to small. So the biggest thing on the actual page is the actual panels. And then from the panels, you wanna do the characters. And then from the characters, you wanna do the background. You do wanna do all the details in sequence, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the panels first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom into the corner of this page. I'm gonna select my lasso tool. But the problem is, you know, there is a um, square selection tool, but some artists don't make their boxes perfectly square because obviously they're using pens and rulers, that kind of thing. So there's sometimes a little bit of discrepancy then. So I wouldn't use the square tool to do this. So what I use is the lasso tool. The problem with the lasso tool is you're reliant on your steadiness of your hand to draw straight lines. And if I try and draw a straight line, you can see it's not that straight. So what we can do is if I click the pen down on the tablet and hold in that corner of the, of the panel, then without taking my pen off the tablet, if I press and hold the Alt button on my keyboard, what this does is this switches the lasso tool to the polygon lasso tool, which means you can draw straight lines. Again, my, my fingers is firmly down on the Alt button, but the pen is now lifted off the tablet and I'm moving it around the tablet to show you where I can. And if I tap down on the tablet again, it creates a point. And then my finger still down on the Alt button and I can draw another straight line wherever I want. So this means I can go all the way, but I'm, all I'm doing is I'm dragging the pen across my pad to the next corner of the panel, which is gonna be there. And I tap down and then I'm gonna go to the next corner to there. And again, my finger is still down on the Alt button and all I'm doing is moving the pen tool across the across the, the black tablet on the, on the desk. And then when I get to the corners, I'm just tapping once with the pen and then when you get to back to where you start with you'll see that it just joins up and then just take your finger off the alt button and that that's all connected in one shape as you can see there is a dotted line around it which is called like the marching ants and then what we do is we just grab another color and then we go to our fill tool which is the paint bucket and then we click inside that selection that we've made and there we go that is that panel filled with a color and then if we grab the lasso tool again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the page around. If you press and hold the space bar on your keyboard, this little hand appears. And when you've got your pen on the tablet, it lets you move it from left to right, again, by keeping your finger down on the space bar. So I'm just gonna recenter that. And then I'm gonna press my Z button. And I'm gonna zoom into the next panel. Again, I'm gonna go to the lasso tool. So again, just gonna press and hold down with the pen tool on my tablet, press the Alt button and then I'm dragging the pen across my tablet outside of the image that you can see on the screen. It's over here by the pass, and I'm just dragging it. I zoomed in a bit too close, so it's gonna take a while to get across. And then when we get to that corner, I'm just gonna dot, and then I'm gonna go down, just pulling the pen down on my tablet. And then I'm just gonna tap the other corner. And then I'm gonna tap this corner. 
The other thing you can do, if I know that line is completely straight, without tapping again, if I just remove my finger from the Alt button, it will connect those dots. So if I zoom out with the Z button, magnifying glass and zoom out, the dotted lines are around that. And then I pick another random color, and then I go to my fill tool, and I just tap inside that box, and that is another panel colored. Again, this one is a bit of a, a, a funny shape panel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start from here. I'm gonna tap, press the Alt button, hold it down, I'm gonna tap here. I'm gonna tap at the zigzag here, and here, and there, and there. Oh, nearly missed it, there, there, there. And I'm just gonna go around this little bit here and connect that selection by just letting go. Then just pick another random color from the uh, the swatches and then press the paint bucket tool and then fill. If your swatches up here where the random colors are not, if you can't see that, if you just go to window and click swatches, as you see that's disappeared, window and click on swatches, anything that's got a little tick by it as actually appears in Photoshop. So that will make it appear. And you just pick random colors and we do this with the panels first. The good thing about keeping your finger on the Alt button as well is if I get to an area that's not a straight line and I need to do a bit of a curve, because I've got the, my, the Alt button pressed down, I can actually switch between the, the polygon lasso tool and the regular lasso, lasso tool just by putting the pen down and then just drawing where I need those little curves to be. So it means you could be more precise with your selections. And then just gonna pick another random color. Even though this character's not in a panel, I'm gonna do him next. So let's do these triangles first. Then if I press the shift button, what that does is this is gonna add to the selection I've already made. So if I draw another shape there, it's gonna be the same select part of the same selection. So I'm just gonna change that to a, so I'm just gonna do this little bit here. So again, tap, and we're gonna go around it, it's a bit curved. So I'm just gonna put the pen down and just draw. And then we're back to straight lines again, because my finger's on the Alt button, then just grab a random color select my pen uh the paint bucket tool and then tap it in that area and do it again and because these are going to be the the same color when the the colors come to select it because you know they are all the same color i'm just going to do all these the same and the good thing about this is even if i start the selection now i've flatted that panel inside the other selection because i've set my tools up correctly that selection is going over the green and the blue but because I click just in the blue area, it's only gonna fill that blue area. If I touched in the green, it would fill that as well. That's the good thing about flattening. This is what we need. And then I'm just gonna quickly go around this character and then that's all the big elements of the page done. Finish that selection. And we are just gonna pick one more random color paint bucket and then just tap inside the character. And that is all the major elements of that page done. You don't have to do this when you do flatten, but this next bit is something that I do. What I do is I go to that flats layer, hover over it and make sure it's selected. And if you press Control J, what that's gonna do is that is gonna make a copy of that layer. So what I'm gonna do is now the one underneath, I'm just gonna double click where it says flats and I'm just gonna change that to panels. So this is great for colorists and they love it when I do this because it means if they need to change, you know, just color of a panel, you know, they wanna tint it a certain color, they don't have to select every single element within that panel. They can literally just go to the panel selection, grab their magic wand tool, and they can select the entirety of that pen. They can just go bang, 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 and bang. If I turn that layer off, you can see I just changed them all to one color. If you want to see what's on the layers underneath it, and you can't because there's obviously layers above it, you see these little eyeballs here. You can turn these off and on, and that turns elements of the page off. So I'm gonna turn the eyeball on for the ink so you can see the inks again. Again, it's transparent underneath, but I've turned the flats layer off so you can't see them. I'm just gonna put the eyeball back on that there, click there, and that's the first stage of flatting done. Okay, so the next bit is the most important bit with regards to flatting, and this is the difference between good flatting and bad flatting. Now, we've done the panels, which is absolutely great, but I'm gonna show you what bad flatting is so you don't replicate it. So again, I'm gonna stress this, do not flat like this, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press the Z button and I'm gonna zoom in, so what a bad colorist, uh, a bad flatter will do is they go to their lasso tool 
and then they'll trace this foot for example you know they'll stay within the black lines and what they'll do is they'll go around the foot so i'm just doing this very quickly for the for demonstrating this video and then they'll grab their paint bucket tool and they will fill that with a color and then they will grab the lasso tool again and go around the big sock here staying inside the black picking a different color grabbing their fill tool then filling that okay so the reason why this is bad is if i turn my inks layer off if i just tap the tap the little eyeball in the layers section you can see there's this actual little gap in between these two colors and again if i put the inks back on you can't see it with the inks there but this is not what we want when we do flatten we want nice solid colors so we actually want that area that pink uh, that purple area to actually be filled in as well it just makes the flats look a lot better and a lot more professional so again there's no difference when i turn the inks on but this is the difference between good flattening and bad flattening so to do this what we need to do is we need to work from big to small so what i mean by this is how we are going to do this is we are going to reverse the flattening process so please don't be afraid what we're going to do is we are going to select the panel so i'm going to grab my uh, magic wand tool here and just like the other tools you need to make sure the anti-alias is off and the tolerance is down to zero and i am going to select that panel and then what i'm going to do is i am going to zoom into certain elements of this panel so for example i'm going to do this backpack where the, where the ammo is and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press my lasso tool and then I'm gonna press and hold the Alt button. And what that's going to do, I'm gonna lift my finger off. If you can see an actual little minus if has appeared next to the lasso tool. So what this means is it's actually gonna subtract from the selection that I've made. So it's gonna take away from that panel selection. So that's how we're gonna flat to make sure all the colors are nice, thick, solid colors. So I'm just gonna undo that. So again, I'm just going to hold the Alt button so the little minus sign appears. Then I'm going to touch my pen down. I'm going to release the Alt button so it's still got the minus sign. Then I'm going to press my Alt button again so it switches between the lasso tool and the polygon lasso tool. That allows me to do my straight lines again. And I'm just going to trace around this little bit that I need. And then I'm going to connect that up. So what that has done is that has deselected that area that you now see in the red from the selection. The marching ants are still there selecting the rest of the panel. So if I zoom out, you can still see that. I've taken away this actual element from that panel. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab another color from my swatches. I'm going to grab my paint bucket and then I'm going to tap inside the panel again. Everything has now been refilled apart from that bucket so then what i'm going to do again is i'm going to do this tube next so i'm going to cl click my lasso tool now before i touch my pen down on my pad i'm going to press the alt key i'm going to touch down with my pen i'm going to release the alt key then i'm going to press the alt key again again this is <laughs> all, all, all everywhere and then i'm just going to draw around this pipe again the artist totty hasn't done you know solid lines here so what we need to do here nothing wrong with that a lot of artists do this we just need to gesture in where those lines should be and we're going to go around here there we go and i'm going to just connect that up and let go of the alt key then i'm going to zoom out i'm just going to pick another random color i'm going to pick a green this time and then i'm going to grab my paint bucket tool and then I'm going to fill the area yet again. So what this means is there are no gaps in these selections like there was before. And that means if an artist needs to select an area, they're going to be nice thick lines. So I'm just going to do the, the little circles in here as well. So again, last time I'm going to do it, I'm going to press the lasso tool. I'm going to press the alt button before I touch my pen down on my pad. There we go. So the little minus sign appears. Then I'm just going to start drawing around these little sections here and then take my finger off the alt key then before i cut that i'm just going to press the alt key again so i'm going to add to this deselection and again pressing the alt key i'm just going to put my pen down on the pad release the alt key then press the alt key again go around this next one and then i'm just going to grab a darker yellow and then i'm going to fill that 
And this is what you need to do. You just pick absolute random colors when you're flatting. So literally you need to go from big to small. So I'm going to do this next bit. And just doing it. so again it just means that the areas that are going to be flatted are going to be nice thick and strong so i'm not going to make you watch me do this for every single panel at this pace so what i'm going to do i'm going to power through and i'm going to see you at the end of this okay Actually, one thing I do want to quickly mention, sorry, is you don't have to deselect the entire selection in one go. So as you can see, I'm doing the ground here and I'm doing it in sections. All you need to do is just bit by bit, made a mistake there, press control shift Z, all button, is you can do it in parts and you just need to make sure that you press the alt button again before you do another selection, otherwise you'll lose your selection. If for some reason you lose your selection, press alt control Z and it'll bring back the last thing you did again. But you could just keep you can keep removing with the alt button and adding with the the shift key okay so just if you make a mistake just alt control z and remember you don't feel that you have to do one giant section in one go so just you know make sure you press the alt button key before you pick that other area because some areas may be a little bit more tricky than others okay to quickly mention it does not matter what colors you're choosing at this time your job is not to actually physically color the comic these colors can be whatever colors that you can select from the palette quickly enough okay so don't worry about the colors it's going to look like it was colored by a, tw a two i say 12 year old by like a, like a, a two year old and they've just gone crazy with the the crayola box but that doesn't matter because it's not your job to color the page it's your job just to flat the page okay so go crazy with the colors as long as you're not using the same color over and over again And that's the first panel done guys that's taken me just under 10 minutes to do that obviously i've been going a bit slower because obviously i was jumping in talking to you guys but this is how easy flattening is it just takes time it's just a bit time consuming but and is the reason why colorists don't tend to do it themselves they tend to focus on their actual coloring rather than flattening so they outsource this so you can do this while you're you know having a chat with your buddies on you know zoom or whatever and it just means you're going to save a lot of money by doing it so i'm just going to start the second panel just like last time i'm just going to grab the magic wand tool so you're going to click on that panel in the flats layer that whole panel has been selected there because you can see by the marching ants i'm going to go to my lasso tool and i'm going to select areas to take away from it so back in i go
And that is another panel done, guys. That's again just just under ten minutes again. And if I turn the inks layer off, you can see. Look at that, nice solid colours. Easy enough for the colourist to be able to select them. And that's it guys that is the entire page done that's taken me just over half an hour to do and that's 10 pound that i've saved so again you do this over you know your entire comic that's 1300 dollars that you're going to save by doing this job i know it's not the most glamorous of comic book jobs but it's another part of the process that you can do where you can save yourself money but again again because it's low skill doesn't mean it's not important it needs to be done correctly so you want no gaps you want these nice thick chunky blocks of color and then the one last thing we need to do is to save this as a tiff file so what you want to do is you want to go up to file save as and then you want to do the drop down box here you want to select tiff and i'm just going to do this as big f off worms page seven it's flat because it's flat color and then you want to make sure that the layers are checked as well so it saves all these layers individually click save then you'll get this little pop-up box you want to make sure that the LZW is selected because that makes sure all the, the layers stay correct. And then click OK, including layers, we increase the file size. That's not a problem. And that is done. So literally the next stage is the colorist will come in. They'll probably make a copy of that layer and then they'll go in and they'll put in the colors they want for their face colors. And then they'll go and do all their lighting and rendering. Hopefully you found that interesting. It wasn't too boring. I did try to speed it up and power through all the boring parts. But that's how you flat a comic page. And that's how you can save $1,300. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.